Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And this is what God's trying to get us to do is confess the Word until we see ourselves with the blessings and the promises in our life. Believe in thy heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That is tapping the tree of life. There's life in every word of God. There's death in the words of the devil. So we tap the tree of life. The word of God, which is Jesus, is the word personified, and in him is eternal life. So they put, uh, God put Adam out of the garden. Now you need to know why God put Adam out of the garden before he ate of the tree of life. After he had sinned and brought the curses into the earth, sickness and disease and poverty and all of that, then if he had have eaten of the tree of life then and lived forever, what a horrible place this would have been. Sickness and disease in his body with no hope of ever being delivered from it, no hope of ever dying or getting rid of it. It just... It had been a horrible place. So God in His mercy drove him out of the garden before he ate of the tree of life and put a flaming sword there. But we still have access to the tree of life. A believer has access to the tree of life in this life. So man shall be satisfied with good but the fruit of his mouth and the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. In other words, go into the Word of God, see what God has given us, begin to give voice to it. Now come over to chapter 13. Verse 2 says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth, now catch this, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. In Proverbs it also says that uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, the end thereof are the ways of death. Some people just feel like, I just, I, it just seems right to me to just say it like it is. When I got 40 years old, I just started falling apart. <laughs> I just come unglued. You know, there is a disease that causes the cells of the body to come unglued. I wouldn't say that if I were you. No, I'm going to say what God said about me. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The leaf shall not wither. Sound to me like that's a tree of life, doesn't it? And it says, uh, uh, whatever he doeth will prosper. He bringeth forth his fruit in the seasons. Leaves shall not wither. Sound like a tree of life to me. Genesis, is the first chapter. I mean, I mean uh, Psalms, chapter 1, verse 3. I confess it daily that whatever I do will prosper. And sometimes I tell the Lord, Lord, whether you've noticed or not, I'm fishing today, and I'm going to prosper. <laughs> well, that's good news, isn't it? We're talking about tapping the tree of life in this life, not waiting until we get to heaven. Because the fact that Jesus was the Word personified, and the Scripture says there's life in every word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. There's life in every word of God. The opposite end of that spectrum is the death in the words of the devil. You don't want to speak the words of death. You hear people talking at all times, tickle me to death, laugh the thought of die, die, to go, go, and die if I don't. Well, that's unscriptural talk. Mary heart doeth good like a medicine. Then I laugh till I do it live forever. Tickle me to life instead of tickle me to death. So don't talk the devil's language. <clears throat> now, come over to uh, Proverbs, the 13th chapter. Verse 12 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. So here is another thing that says it's a tree of life. <clears throat> it says that desire, when it cometh, is a tree of life. Now you could do a little experiment with that, and some of you have already done it. You go down the highway and you see this new car sitting out on the lot. Boy, that's a nice looking car. 
and, and you slow down the next time you come by and look at it. That's why you turn in. <coughs> and, and, and you get out and get in it and sit down, and you can see yourself driving that thing, and it's sitting in your garage. And if you're not c careful, it'll whoop a craving on you, as we'd say in Arkansas. <laughs> and the next thing you know, see, desire has come. And it's a tree of life. You'll find a way to get the money, even if you don't have it. You'll find a way to get the money, and before long, that car will be in your garage with 48 easy payments. <laughs> <laughs> because you'll search the yellow pages till you find somebody that says, guaranteed financing of the car. <laughs> So when desire cometh for the things of God, it's a tree of life. And the Spirit of God will reveal to you how to cause it to come to pass. Now, now there's a scripture in Proverbs, I think it's uh, not Proverbs, it's in uh, Psalms. I think it's 37, somewhere in there, chapter 37. It says, when uh, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, you hear this preached all kinds of ways, but... Uh, and there's some truth in all of it, I suppose, but I believe what he's saying is this. If you delight yourself in the Lord, you're delighting yourself in the Word. You know, somebody said, I'm trusting God or the Lord. Well, what are you trusting about Him? You're trusting His Word if you're trusting Him, right? Uh, so if we delight ourselves in the, in the Lord, we delight ourselves in His Word. And he will put the desires in your heart that are of God. That word will put the desires in your heart that is of God. And when he does, when that desire cometh, it's a tree of life. You'll be led by your spirit to be in the right place at the right time to meet the right people or get the right job or the right situation to cause the manifestation of the promise of God in your life. And it's the easiest thing in the world. You know, some people struggle with faith. really shouldn't be the struggle of faith. If the Word abides in you, faith is there. And, th and that's what we call it. We come back to the Word. And you tap the tree of life by confessing the Word, proclaiming the Word, until it is manifest in your life, and then you're led by your Spirit to be in the right place at the right time. And the Apostle Paul said, I have not seen ear, have not heard, neither did it in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, the first Spirit there, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He reveals them through the Holy Spirit. But when he says the Spirit searcheth, he's not talking about the Holy Spirit searches or the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God. It's the human spirit that searches the deep things of God. And uh, you can confess the Word until you cause the Word of God to, to, to be manifest in your life, or you can complain until you get depressed. Go there to Psalm 77. I want to read you a scripture here. This may make your hair stand up like mine. <laughs> <clears throat> Psalm 77, verse 2, In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord, and my soul ran in the night, and ceased not, my soul refused to be comforted. And I remembered God and was troubled. <laughs> well, a lot of folks get troubled when they remember God. <laughs> I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Now listen to this. The spirit was over, his spirit was overwhelmed. Thou holdest my eyes waking, I am so troubled I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Did you catch that? When you commune with your heart, and how you do that, Paul said the word is in your mouth, and then it's in your heart. The problem here was he was complaining. Now let's, let's follow it down a little bit. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Now, what was it searching about? Here's the questions he had. Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail evermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Have you ever felt like that? Well, I don't know why God's forgotten to be gracious. <laughs> Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? See, that means think about that. 
and he thought about it. And, and he said, I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Now catch this. It's my infirmity. He figured out, I've caused this thing. It's my problem. Now listen to what, what he, his spirit made diligent search, and here's what he come up with. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also upon thy, all thy work and talk of thy doing. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great as our God? Thou art the God that doeth wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob. And, and he goes on to, he talked himself right out of depression. You can tap the tree of life the same way because we have the new covenant. Jesus was the Word. And He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But you know you can get negative and talk all these things and it'll shut off the, the flow. You talk negative and that is a negative aura around you. You walk out in the midst of the blessing. They run off you like water off a duck's back. But if you ever get close to a to a, a curse, it'll stick. But if you put God's Word in your heart and you tap the tree of life, the promise of God, you can walk out in the midst of the curses and run off you like water off a duck's back. But if you ever get in a mile of blessing, it will overtake you. Amen. You're tapping the tree of life. Hallelujah. I'm doing better preaching than you are saying amen. amen. <laughs> yeah. All right, come back over here to the book of Proverbs now. <clears throat> There is a, a wealth of information in the book of Proverbs, and we don't have time to get into it all. <clears throat> well, chapter 14 and verse 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now come over to the 15th chapter and verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life. The healing power of the tongue, I believe as one translation says it. Did you know that there's power in your mouth to heal? It can be. John Osteen, late John Osteen, wrote a book called There's a Miracle in Your Mouth. There can be anyway. It's by speaking. Because Jesus said it, he, this is the way he said it. He said, whosoever shall say to the mountain of problem, the mountain of situation, the adverse circumstance in your life, whosoever shall say to it, be removed, be cast in the sea, and not doubt in his heart, but believe what he is saying will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That's the way to tap the tree of life. You can remove the mountain of adversity. Jesus proved it worked in his ministry. He spoke to fig trees and they obeyed him. He spoke to the wind and it obeyed him. He spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. He spoke to the dead and they obeyed him. He knew how to tap this thing and he was the tree of life. How did Jesus have so much faith? How did all this work? He wasn't operating as God when he was here on earth. He was operating as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost and healing power. He was son of God, all right. He had the body of man. So you see that Jesus is operating under the same ability that we have available to us today. But he said, I, I speak only that which I hear my father say. He kept God's word in his mouth. In other words, he wouldn't speak anything contrary to what God said in his word about him. But so many times you hear people saying all kinds of things. A fellow said to me a few years ago, he said, I'm just dying to go to Israel. I said, if I was you, I wouldn't go. <laughs> Not with words like that coming out of your mouth. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life speaking the healing power of the tongue, speaking and proclaiming. Now, I know that sometimes people think, uh, this, uh, it's, just, it's just hard to get your mind to wrap around this. Uh, come over here to uh, chapter 16. 
Verse 9 says, A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. You speak the word of God, that there is abundance and no lack. My God has met my need according to his riches in glory, and you're on your journey through life, and the devil has things planned for you, and you're going to run headlong into something that's going to call you financial problems. But what did it say? Man's heart devises his way. So, so we know where we want to go, but the Lord directs his steps. Then all of a sudden he just feels led by the Spirit to go this way instead of that way. I've had it happen many times, many times. Business deals offered me one time. A fellow said, boy, if you don't get on on this, you're really going to miss it? You're going to miss it? I said, well, I'm going to pray about it. So I told the Lord, I said, now, Lord, this thing sounds good. You can talk yourself into it. I said, sounds good to me. And I told my wife, I said, now, if I, I'm going to go to the Lord with it and lay it on the altar. And I said, now, Lord, I'm willing to change, and I know you know whether this is right or not. And if it's not your will that I do this, and if it's not going to be a good thing, well, uh, take this desire from me. See, when desire comes, it's tree of life. I just talked, he, he and myself had about talked myself into it. So I laid it on the altar, and I said, Lord, I'm just going to set it on the shelf and not even think about it for a while, and uh, then I'm going to see how I feel about it, because the Lord's going to direct my step. I got up the next morning, and the first thought I had about that, I thought, that is the dumbest decision I ever made. I, I, I'm not going to get into that. What in the world was I thinking? And so I called the man and said, no, no, I'm not going to go. Oh, you're going to miss the boat. Yeah, I did, but the boat like went to prison. <laughs> The man got a, a, a suspended sentence by, by selling that stuff, but somebody deceived him, and everybody put a dime, every dime they put in it lost it. Well, see, the Lord directed my steps. My heart devised my way, but I put my heart before the Lord and said, Lord, I'm willing to change. Tree of life. Somebody said, well, it don't make a lot of sense, but it makes dollars. <laughs> praying one time, the Lord said, I had my, all my rice out up when I was farming, and me and another fellow were in there, and he just got his rice out. And he said, uh, the fellow that uh, run the dryer, he said, I can get you $3.60 a bushel for your rice today. And the guy said, sell mine. That's a good price. It went up 20 cents a bushel that day. He said, what about you? I said, I'm going to pray about it. Oh, huh? do what? Anyway, I prayed about it and got to con confessing the word, and I do hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. And I heard the Spirit of God say to me, hold it, don't sell it. So I held it. That was late September. Uh, January. January, first part of January, I sold it for $9.03 a bushel. May not make sense, but it makes dollars. You can hear the voice of the Spirit of God if you allow him to speak to you. Uh, now, in, in verse 23 of the 16th chapter, it says, The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth. Where does wisdom come from? From the Word of God. You get that Word in you, it'll teach your mouth. Pleasant words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. If I had any kind of bone problems, I would speak the Word. It's health to your bones. <clears throat> Come over here to the 18th chapter. Verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, well spring of wisdom, a flowing brook. In other words, you can draw out of that well. See, it's the other scripture we read says the well of life. Verse 7 says a fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul. Another scripture that says, you're snared by the words of your mouth. So a man's spirit or his heart shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now that's sobering thoughts. But see, you can tap the tree of life here by words, or you can tap the tree of death. Elvis Presley said, I'll never live a day older than my mother lived. He didn't. They still don't know what killed him. I do. Spiritual law. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He said that over a number of years, over and over and over. 
Abraham Lincoln said, when this war is over, I shall die. And he did. The, the day it was over, he died that night at assassin's bullet. If he just said, when this war is over, I'll live to be an old man, and I'll see this nation be the greatest nation on the face of the earth. He'd been led by his spirit, stay home, study his Bible that night, instead of going to the Ford Theater where the, he was assassinated. I'm telling you, folks, God didn't just put this in here to fill in pages of the Bible. <laughs> Life and death is in the power of the tongue. They love to eat the fruit thereof. Now listen to this one. Uh, I know this is going to get on your toes, but the Lord will heal your toes. <laughs> Verse 3 of, of chapter 19 of Proverbs 19.3. The foolishness of a man perverteth his way. Like I said, the fellow said, just dying to go to Israel, that perverts his way. It's going to head him onto the bus that's going to be blown up. And he doesn't realize that, but he's planted seed. And his heart, heart fretteth against the Lord. Now see, people speak things, well, I tell you, I can already see we're not going to have the money to pay off our house this year, or pay the note on our house. We're going to lose our house and car, sure as world. Oh... Let's read it again. The foolishness of a man perverteth his way. Then his heart fretteth against the Lord. Then when it happens, he loses his house. I don't know why the Lord called, allowed this to happen. The Lord didn't have a thing to do with it. He told you how to operate it and tap the tree of life. But they tap the tree of poverty. In the uh, 20th chapter, Proverbs, verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of his belly. The human spirit is what God uses to enlighten you. You can be led by your spirit to be in the right place at the right time in the right situation if you keep the right words in your mouth. Speaking in agreement with the word of God. And it will change situations in your life. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. One other, uh, or two, two more scriptures here I want to indicate to you. In the 21st chapter, verse 23 says, Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. This needs to be taught in prisons. You know why most of the people in prison? A big part of them They've been told all their life that you're no good, you'll never mount to anything. And they believed it. They accepted it. Then they got to talking to somebody and said, we ought to just rob a bank. We can get money quick that way. Mm -hmm. You can keep your, keep your mouth and his tongue, he keepeth the soul from trouble. Then let's come over to the 20... Uh, Twenty-seventh chapter. <clears throat> Verse 19. As water, as in water, face answers to face, so the heart of man to man. You look in the water, still water, and you see what your face is, like looking in a mirror. You can see yourself. Answer to face, so the heart of man to man. What you put in your heart is going to bring that same thing right back to you. When you plant a seed in the soil, that's exactly what's going to come up. I mean, God says it's in many ways in here that if we stay with the Word, Jesus said it this way, if you continue in my Word, then shall ye be my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because God says it's in many ways you won't miss it. If, if you're ready to receive the Word of God, and I, I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit has done exactly what we ask Him to do. Uh, I want to relate one story before I close. Uh, uh, my mother and dad had, uh, this has been 25 years ago, in their backyard they had a big pecan tree. They set it out, and that was a, it, it got huge. I mean, it, it should have been producing pecans for 10 years. Hadn't been one single pecan on it. Not one. And uh, mother said to dad one morning, I was over there eating breakfast, she said, I want you to cut that pecan tree down. Said, said it hadn't produced any pecans yet. So just cut it down. 
And I said, uh, uh, have you talked to it? <laughs> well, yeah, she had. Every time she went around there, she said it wouldn't produce any pecans, you know. <laughs> and it, it, Jesus said, Inima, inanimate object would obey you. I said, uh, and, and I kind of reminded her what Jesus said, you can have what you say. And I said, you've been saying that to it ever since you, every time you walk around, she said, that tree just never does produce any pecans. I said, you start talking to that tree and tell it it's going to produce pecans. It's going to produce a lot of pecans. She said, well, I'll just do that. So she started talking to that tree. When she'd go out there, she'd say, this tree is going to produce a lot of pecans. You're going to produce a lot of pecans. Now, I know she was probably thinking, I, 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 I don't believe I'm doing this. You, know? <laughs> but you, you feel a little silly sometimes. But uh, anyway, she did that. Now, God's my witness. My wife is the witness. That year, Dad had to prop up the limbs with two befores. It was breaking the limbs off the tree. <laughs> Now, folks, Jesus knew what he was talking about. And there's some of you that's been prophesying over your business or, or situation, you've been saying it like it is, and as long as you say it like it is, it's going to stay like it is or grow worse. But I'm telling you, if you believe and doubt not in your heart, you can have what you say when it agrees with the Word of God. Amen. It's like a farmer planting seed. Why did the farmer plant cotton or corn? because he wanted it. He planted what he wanted. He didn't plant what he was having trouble with. I didn't plant Johnson grass when Johnson grass was in my field. I planted, I poisoned it and planted what I wanted. I'm telling you, this is a secret to entering into the provision of God's blessing. You can tap the tree of life if you keep God's word in your mouth. If you would like a copy of the program you have seen today, call our toll-free order line at 877-396-9400 or visit our website at www.caps.tv. The program is available on CD and DVD for $12 plus shipping and handling. Just ask for the program number listed here and be sure to specify what format you want when ordering. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.